Hello, I'm Dan from Ace of Retros and Sales, and today we're going to be taking a look at this brand new 2024 Four Chateau Model 22E. Today, just like always, I'll be giving you the full walkthrough, the exterior and interior, so you'll be all set and prepared when you decide to rent from us. Now, the length for this vehicle is going to be 24 feet, as well as the height, we like to say it is 12 and a half feet. It's going to be a little bit less than that, but you should still keep 12 and a half in mind uh, for things like parking garages, drive throughs and tunnels. We're going to continue along the driver's side over here, starting with our fresh water inlet. So we're going to give you all the hoses and cords you'll need. For the fresh water inlet, this is going to be to fill up your water tank. So if you're on the road, you want to use your water for your sink, shower, toilet, you're going to fill it up this way. Next up, we have our generator. The generator is a substitute for when you're not plugged in at a campsite. So this is going to be powering all your major electrical appliances inside the RV. That'll be your AC unit on the roof, your microwave, your TVs, and all of your outlets behind the cab. The one thing you shouldn't do is if you run the AC and the microwave at the same time while you're using the generator, it is sometimes a bit too powerful and it'll cause it to trip, so avoid doing that. In case you do accidentally do that, you can just open up the top here. Running both of those things at the same time will cause this breaker to flip backwards. So all you want to do is just come out here and flip it towards you like that. Everything else is handled inside the RV. The generator will run on engine gas, so as long as you at least a quarter tank full of gas, you can expect this to work. Next up, we have our exhaust for our furnace and our hot water. So of course, expect them to be hot and do not put your hand there. Next so that, we have our outside shower. This is just a little faucet with some knobs uh, to help wash off dirt or sand before you head back inside the RV. Next up, we have our TV cable inlet. We will provide the TV cable for you. All you want to do is just hook it up in here if you have cable hookup at your campsite. If you do not, there's also an antenna for this RV so you can find local channels through the air instead. Next up, we have our power cord connection. So this RV takes 30 amp service. You can tell by the three prongs here. So you want to make sure that your campsite has 30 amp service. But once you're plugged in all those major electrical appliances, once again, that'll be your AC, microwave, TV, and all your outlets behind the cab, they will all be working on shore power. So you do not have to worry about the generator at all when you're plugged in. Continuing on, we have our fuel inlet. So this RV takes regular 87 gas, so no premium or diesel. Uh, and the tank for this is going to be 55 gallons. Here we are in the back of the driver's side where we have our dumping station. So I'm going to teach you how to dump out your waste tanks right now. We've got our sewer hose right here. Uh, all you want to do is just open up the dumping outlet over here. Just like that. And we're going to clip this on this end with the teeth, just like that. And you're going to take the other end with the elbow and stick this in the ground at your campsite, wherever else your sewage is. From there, we have two color-coded valves. We have our black valve for our black tank, that's our toilet water, and our gray valve for our gray tank, that's our sink and shower water. When it's pushed in right now, like it is, it's closed. So all I want to do is pull up the black one first, and then the gray one to kind of flush out your hose. Um, the gauges inside the RV will tell you how full or empty each of the tanks are. So once they're empty, you can just push them back in to close it, unscrew the hose, and you are all good to go. Moving right along, we have our city water connection. So this is in counterpart to the fresh water. You're going to use the same hose for both of these, but they will serve different purposes. So our city water will be for when you're at a campsite and you want to use the campsite's water, their pump, and not your own. So you're going to take the same hose and hook it up into this one as opposed to the fresh water. And next we have our flush valve. You won't have to worry about this. It just helps us sanitize the waste tanks for the next customer. Coming around to the back of the RV, the only things to point out are our rear view camera. I'll talk more about that inside. And then we also have a service ladder that we ask you, uh, please do not go up there. It's just for service purposes. And next up onto the passenger side, we have our biggest storage area right here, which is actually also where we've stored all of the hoses and boards that we will provide you. Going through each of these, we've seen this already. This is our sewer hose. This bag here has plenty of things. First, we have this white hose. This is our fresh in city water hose. So you can hook that up to either one of the inlets. You can attach one of our water pressure regulators onto the end of your hose. We have a TV cable here. So as I showed you, you're just gonna hook this up into the inlet. And next to that, we have our power cord. So just as I showed you on the other side, just plug this in at your campsite and then you will have all of your electrical appliances working inside. If you don't have 30 amp connection, we will also provide a 30 to 15 amp. This is just like a regular wall outlet. However, if you are plugged in like this, uh, please do not expect 
all the major electrical appliances to be working. So for example, your AC unit, which is your most powerful thing, it will not work on 15 amp. Next to that, we have our outside power outlets. Uh, these will only work if you're plugged into shore power or your generator is running. Above that, we have our air refrigerator exhaust. So this is gonna start leaking water. It's just condensation. It's just how it works, so it's not broken or anything. And lastly, for the outside, we have our propane tank. The tank on this should last you about a week or so before you'll have to refill it. If you do have to refill it, truck stations and campsites, they will fill it up for you. The tank is going to be for things like your hot water, your furnace, your stove, as well as your refrigerator when you're not plugged in. And that concludes the outside portion of this walkthrough so we can head inside over here. You'll note that we have a detachable screen door, just like that. At the entrance here, we have quite a few switches. I'll go over each of these. This switch on the left here, this is for the galley lights, the inside ceiling lights, the main ones right over here. Next to that, we have our little step light. It's just this one down here. Next to that, we have our awning. So this will extend and retract our awning. The awning will go out about eight feet total and it's only for shade. So if it gets windy or rainy, we suggest you bring it back in immediately. The awning is going to run on the house battery, which I'll get to in just a moment. But next to that, we have our LED strip for the awning. We have our step light, which you will pretty much only see at nighttime. It's underneath the stairs right here. And then we have our cargo light switch. Once you have this on, you can turn on and off any of the lights in the outside storage compartments. We have a small knob here, which is for our house battery, which is actually underneath these steps right here. House battery is going to be for very minor electrical things like the lights and the awning. It's going to be charged in a lot of different ways, for example, when your engine's running, when your generator's running, even when you're plugged into shore power. So unless you're outside and you haven't powered on anything in the past few days, you can leave this on and it won't run out of battery. To my right here, we have our fire extinguisher and also for safety purposes, we have a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide and propane detector inside the RV. Now that we're inside, we have the most important part of the inside, our control panel. This will tell you pretty much everything you need to know about your RV. I'll start off in this corner here where we have the levels of all of the tanks I was talking about. So as I push down on each of these buttons, these will light up from empty to full. For example, your LPG, that's your propane, I'm going to push down on this. You can see it lights up to two thirds. We have our battery, you can see that is two thirds charged. Fresh water is full black tank is empty and our gray tank is empty as well. These are our waste tanks. Below that we have our water pump switch. So if I turn this on, you'll see how this little pump light turns on. This means we can use our house battery to draw water from our tank. That also means if you're plugged into water at your own campsite, you want to have this off since you want to take their water from their pump and not from your own. If you want to heat up your water, you can either do so with propane gas or if you're plugged in at your campsite to electricity, we can use 110 volt electricity. Either way, it'll take up to 15 minutes to heat up your water and you should only have it on when you need it since you don't wanna drain your propane. Over in this corner, we have our generator. So this meter will tell you the total number of hours the generator has been running ever since it was manufactured. So here it says 12.4 hours. You can keep track of your hours that way. You shouldn't run the generator for more than three hours at a time and then you should have it off for about two to three hours just to prevent it from overheating. To turn on the generator, you're actually going to hold down stop first just to prime it until this red light turns on. Once that's on, you can hold down start for a few seconds. And there you go. Once you hear it running, it's going to take up to 30 seconds and then when you hear your microwave beep, that means everything inside will be powered. With the generator on, I can show you how to find channels on your TV. So once it's on, you can press input right here. You're going to make sure your input source is set to TV. From there, we can press menu, head over to channels over here, and we're gonna go over to auto channel search. And then from here, we can choose whether we're gonna use the antenna like we are right now, or if you're plugged into cable at your campsite, you can go down to cable from the wall. I'll go back, back up to uh, antenna, I'll press it once, and then it'll take about five minutes to find channels for you. Also with the generator on, I can show you the controls for the AC. It's pretty simple. This just controls the temperature itself. And then we can either go down the gray side here for just the fan or the blue side for the AC. To turn off the generator, all you have to do is just hold down stop for a few seconds. Back in the corner here, we have our bathroom. 
most of it is just like a regular bathroom, but there are a few things I'll point out for you. As far as the toilet goes, it's kind of like an airplane toilet. You just gotta push down on this pedal here with your foot to flush it down. Just make sure that your water pump is on or you're taking water from the campsite. I should note that the toilet paper is RV specific, so you want to go to the camping section at Walmart or campsites will also sell this kind of RV marine dissolvable toilet paper. During your rental, we'll also provide you with some bottles of solution. This is just to pour down the toilet in case the smell comes up from the black tank. This will just help freshen it up. Apart from that, you just have a standard shower and sink. In the other corner here, we have our bedroom. We have a privacy curtain that goes along the top here. You have a skylight with an exhaust fan that's electric. You can turn up and down the skylight with this knob, and you just turn on and off the fan with these buttons. If you need to use heat control, this will use a bit of your house battery and a bit of your propane to heat up your RV. Next, we're going to go on to the kitchen area. So, starting off with our fridge, when you're not plugged in, as we are right now, um, the fridge is going to run off of propane, but once you do plug in at your campsite, it will automatically uh, switch over to electricity. So no matter what, your fridge is going to stay on your entire time and your food will be kept cool. Next up we have a standard house microwave with a turntable and everything in there. Uh, you just want to make sure again not to run the AC and the microwave at the same time when you're on your generator. Below that we have our stove, so we have these three knobs for these three burners. All you want to do is just set one to this little fire option and you can hear the propane come out. You just hit pilot and there you go. We also have an LED light for nighttime. And then these are actually just drawers, so no ovens for this RV. We also have our kitchen sink with a cover for some extra counter space. And if you want it a little bit more, we have one that pops up just like this. And then to bring it back down, you just push on right over here on both sides. To use the windows, all you want to do is just bring this latch downward and open it up. Just make sure not to open it the full way because it's the emergency exit. But for the blinds, they're just pulled down and pushed back up. To my left here, we have a little wardrobe. We have a little pole where you can hang our clothes. And we have some drawers down here and up along the dinette area. Below the bed, we have our combined fuse box and circuit breaker box. And here is our dinette area. We have two seat belts here, and this will also turn into a bed, and I'll show you that right now. The first thing you want to do is you can just take this latch here. When it's flipped to the right, it's locked. All you want to do is flip it to the left to unlock the table, and you can push it down onto these ledges, just like that. From there, all you have to do is just put these cushions in this format, and here is your bed. You'll also notice that we have an anchor for a child seat. You'll also know that we have a charging station right in the middle of the dinette here. We also have our overhead bunk over here, so all I did was just bring this one cushion down along here. And then we also have a privacy curtain that will go Velcro across the front here. During your rental, we'll also give you this envelope. We have quite a few things in here. So we have a QR code that you can scan for an online guide slash FAQ. Um, this will answer most of the questions that you have. We also have our registration here for the vehicle. And then we also have our extra fuses for the fuse box just in case anything happens. And if something does happen, we have our 24-7 roadside assistance number via CoachNet. So you can call this number and provide them with your reservation code so they'll know what make and model you have for your vehicle and they can answer pretty much any question you have. Here we are in the front cab, so I'll just show you the keys first. This is of course for the engine. We also have the purple key for the cabin door. Um, gray key here is for the outside compartments. We have a silver key here for the outside shower. And then we also have our contact information here. You can contact us if you have any questions about the reservation itself. Our center console is pretty much just like a regular car or truck as regards the AC and all that kind of stuff. But I'll direct you to the display over here. So we can connect our phone with Bluetooth. We have a radio, of course. And then we also have our backup camera. So if I press that, we can keep this on when we're driving. Otherwise, when you put the RV in reverse, it'll also pop up. In addition to the rear view camera, we also have side view cameras. They will be activated when you turn on your indicator. The parking brake is right by my left foot over here. So you just push it down to engage it. And then to release, we have our lever right here. 
And that's going to be it for our 2022 Thor Chateau Model 22E. I'm Dan from 